Hi, my name is Gary Friedman, and I'm a professional stock photographer at FriedmanArchives.com. I've also just finished writing a book about the Sony Alpha 9, the most sophisticated E-mount, probably the most sophisticated camera in the consumer sector ever. Now, that's a pretty bold claim, but I back it up. Let's start with 20 frames per second. No shutter sound, completely silent. No frame blackout. And, as a previous video that I made points out, it's much more difficult to do autofocus when you're actually stopped down to your intended f-stop. This camera does it. Most DSLRs can't. And yet, it can keep up with an Nikon D5 in terms of sports photography. That's amazing. And it's cheaper. Anyway, having finished the book, I wanted to make two quick videos showing how the camera can be customized and also some of the more unintuitive things about the metering modes, of which there are many, the focusing modes, of which there are even more, and sometimes when you put things in video, things actually get clearer. So let me start by mentioning the three different ways you can customize the camera. The first way is being able to assign functions to buttons. Now, the, what makes this unique is the fact that there are many more functions that you can assign to buttons than there are um, in the menus. Let me give you an example. So, in order to assign a button, you hit the menu button, and then you go to the camera 2 menu up here. Almost to the end, number 8, there it is, custom operation 1. You got two items on the top here, custom key for shooting and custom key for playback. Shooting means when you're taking pictures, and you got three screens worth of buttons that are reassignable. Four custom buttons on the bottom, the control wheel, the control wheel is the round part over here, Plus, there's also a multi-selector, which everybody else calls a joystick right up above. So you, it's nice to have the best of both worlds. And the, find the multi-selector is much, much faster to move things around in. Um, let's say we want to reassign the right button. Normally, from the factory, it's set to ISO. I want to change it to something called Zoom. Why I want to do that? I'll explain that in just a minute. It's a useful feature when you're shooting video. So, uh, you now have 17 pages of functions that you can assign to a single button. Uh, let me just go through very, very quickly because I'm looking for one called Zoom, and I think it's almost on its own menu there. There it is, Zoom, page 11. I hit the center button, and now the right button is set to Zoom. What does that do? Well, you're shooting a video, and you don't have one of those fancy power zoom lenses that uh, like you can sometimes pay dearly for. You have an old-fashioned manual zoom, but manual zooming can be kind of jerky and unsmooth. So you want to zoom in while you're shooting video. Rather than zooming in with the lens, I just hit the right button, and then a new menu comes up. And also hitting the right button, I can just zoom in by a certain amount. Now, what it's actually doing is throwing, throwing away pixels, which is why I don't recommend this for shooting stills. Who wants to throw away all those valuable pixels that you paid for? But when you're shooting video, you're already shooting with a subset of the pixels that this 24 megapixel sensor can capture. All you're doing here is throwing away a different subset, so you're not really having a reduction in quality. So this can be a really nice automated pseudo power zoom. Now, as I mentioned, there are many features that do not appear in the menus, but they can still be assigned to functions. That's why it's important to have a look at the, at the book very carefully. Two of my favorites are bright monitoring, uh, which you can find here. Let me reassign the right button again. Instead of zoom, let's go to something called bright monitoring, which is here. Bright monitoring is used whenever you're shooting in almost total darkness, like these astrophotography images. It's hard to compose your image because you can't always see the palm tree, or you can't always see the mountain ridges, or you can't always focus on the stars. Remember, with these E-mount cameras, there's no such thing as actually moving the lens to infinity. It's all focused by wire. There's no hard stop. So being able to see in almost complete darkness and then being able to focus critically to get a really great image is a wonderful feature. My other favorite feature is the flash exposure lock function, which normally you would never need unless you had your subject not nearly anywhere near the center of the image like these examples show. Many other features as well. So that's one way to customize the camera. Assign one function to one button. Wouldn't it be great if you could amplify that? What if you could assign 10 functions to a button? You can. And you can access it here using camera one, Menu item three, whatever that means. Register custom shooting set. Here's what it means. You got three different sets of collections. Each one of these holds 10 variables. 
the shooting mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, uh, and if you have yeah, shutter priority mode, you can specify what your shutter speed is, what drive mode, what's your exposure compensation set to. All these things can all be instantly recalled at the push of a button. The way you do it is first you assign, this is for sports mode, this is how I configured it. So ISO auto continuation shooting, one two thousandth of a second, great. So change your variables and go down to the bottom, say register, okay, this is re recall custom hold one. It's been configured. Now you go to the key assignment menu, camera menu two, custom key shooting, and now let's assign the AEL button for lack of a better example. You can assign this. There's 19 pages worth of stuff that you can actually assign, one of which is custom hold one, custom hold two, custom hold three. Custom hold one is the one we just configured, so we could actually do that. And then from now on, no matter what mode you're in, I'm in program mode. Let's say I'm in uh, let's say I'm in manual exposure mode, and I set my shutter speed to something ridiculously slow. But this will give you a good idea. So I'm in I'm in manual exposure mode, eighth of a second, ISO auto. I hit the AEL button, and instantly all those settings get kicked in. Two thousandth of a second, I'm in shutter priority mode, and I can start shooting. So it's great if you want to go from one kind of shooting subject to another kind of shooting subject, going from sports to landscape, for example, in a blink of an eye. It's great. Is there a third way to customize the camera? Yes. Instead of just being able to recall one function or 10 functions all at once, you can actually record everything in the camera in one menu and everything in the camera two menu all at once. And this is greatly expanded from previous Sony cameras. Basically over here, you see the one, two, and three on the exposure mode dial? Those are memory recall settings. Once you configure them, you can instantly recall a banks of information just by moving it to one, two, or three. How do you configure it? Here's how it's done. On the camera one menu, it's uh, you got two settings for memory. One is called camera one, camera two memory. What that means is everything in the camera one menu, everything in the camera two menu, and then Basically, what you want to do is configure the camera the way you want and then store it in one of seven different memory locations. Only the first three are significant because they're actually stored inside the camera. M1 through M4 are stored in your memory card, which in my opinion is not that useful and I explain why I say so in the book. So here you say you want to store it in memory location three. Great. It's done. Then you just move the exposure mode dial to memory three. And there it is. And just in case you forgot what you had stored there, you can page through all the different variables. Now, why am I so happy about the way that they implemented this? One of my most used features in the studio is that second one from the bottom, Live View Display. In the past, when you stored everything in memory, it would not store that variable. And now it can. What is Live View Display? Well, let's say you're shooting in the studio. And let's say you got a radio trigger, a dumb radio trigger, not like wireless flash where the camera talks to the flash and the two of them agree to figure out how much light to output. No, these are dumb radio triggers triggering dumb studio strobes. And because you're in the studio, you got your camera in manual exposure mode and you have a fast shutter speed set like perhaps 125th of a second and F10 and you have your ISO set to something low because the light's going to be coming from your strobes and you don't want any ambient light to show up. And that's what your viewfinder looks like. How do you work with that? You can't see your model, you can't see to compose. That's awful. So that's why the live view display function exists. When you set it to setting effect on, you get to preview what it's going to look like when you take the picture. Now again, the camera has no idea you have a wireless trigger or a packet wizard attached. So it has no idea you're shooting studio strobes. It thinks you're shooting ambient, so it's going to look like that. Turn that feature off, and then you'll be able to compose your shot and see what's going on, and, uh, and then be able to take your picture. One last feature for part one. There's so many different modes and settings, and, and people always want to know, what do I use? In the book, I actually detail every single function, what it does, what my setting is, and why. But basically for walking around, my philosophy is the camera can do so many wonderful things automatedly on its own. It can focus, it can do the white balance, it can do the exposure, it can do all this stuff. Why not let the camera do what it does best most of the time? And I should be able to retain the ability 
to override it at a moment's notice should the camera make the wrong choice. So for that reason, whenever I'm in walk around mode, believe it or not, I shoot in program mode because that helps me get the shot very quickly. Then if I had the luxury of having a second opportunity, I might say, well, would this picture look better with a blurrier background? Or would it be better if I actually increase the shutter speed so the things that move will look sharp? Then I will take it out of program mode and move it to something better because I'm always figuring out what can I do to make it better? What can I do to make it better? For focusing, here's what I use most of the time because again, shooting people, shooting landscapes, it will get it right most of the time and I can very quickly override it in case it gets it wrong. To change the focus area, I hit the function button and I can go and choose the top one, either wide or at the very bottom lock on AF wide and I'll talk about that in part two. So let's actually go to wide right there and wide mode will try to do the very best it can. So let's say I have two different subjects, two different distances apart, and the camera in wide mode gets it wrong. Now I happen to know it was going to focus on the closest thing because that's what it does if it doesn't find a face. But I want to be able to very quickly tell the camera, no, 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 I want you to focus on something else. So what I do is I have the center button here set to something called focus standard. And this is actually the factory default setting. Under custom key shooting, The center button is set to focus something called focus standard. What does that do? The short answer is it can very quickly override your camera's autofocus setting. So in a case like this, you want to be able to very quickly tell the camera, no, don't focus on that. Focus on whatever I put in the center. And then I put my subject in the center. I press the center of the control wheel at the back. And then it will automatically switch from AFC mode to AFS mode and from wide area autofocus to spot or center autofocus very, very quickly. And then that overrides it. Then I can just recompose and shoot if I want to. And then the camera gets in focus what I want rather than its best guess. So I can take advantage of the camera speed and very quickly override it if there's ever any problems. There are other walk around settings that I use, but I can't explain them yet until part two when I talk about the different kinds of metering modes. So come on back.